Hello and welcome to the summary worksheet from Chapter 6. This is from Scott Stevens' Introduction to Statistics, the Think and Do book. And in, this, in these pages we're just going to go over the answers to a small collection of problems from Chapter 6. And these answers are also available in the back of the book, so you can also find them there. But I will go over them and hopefully try to fill in some of the detail where needed. So I'm going to convert to full screen here. Okay, for the first set of problems, we have a little piece of preliminary information where we're talking about um, IQ scores. Get rid of that. IQ scores. We're going to assume they are normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. So that's a mean equal to 100 and a standard deviation of 15. Okay, so for this first group, if a person is randomly selected, find each of the following requested probabilities. In this case, X denotes an IQ score of a randomly selected person. And I want you to sketch the normal curve and shade the relevant areas for these problems. And those were done in the answers with software, so they look really good. Yours don't have to look that good. Uh, just any sort of you know, bell-shaped curve is sufficient. It doesn't have to be really all that symmetric oh, or smooth. Um, okay, so the first question, what is the probability of selecting a random person whose IQ is greater than 60? Right? And so we draw our normal curve here. And again, if you want to draw a normal curve that looks, you know, like this, that's usually how they look when I do it on the board. Um, you know, so they don't have to be pretty, but you should sort of get the idea of what's going on. But I had software do this, so it looks pretty. Um, okay, so here's x that equals the IQ variable, right? And the mean is right here. And I want to find the probability of selecting a person with an IQ of 60 or greater, or greater than 60. Right? So I want this area. It represents the probability we seek. Okay, so the thing is we have to convert this x score to a z score, where the mean of the z distribution is 0, that corresponds to our 100 there, and we have to figure out what the 60 converts to. So if x is 60, I use the formula that z equals x minus mu over sigma, 60 minus 100 over 15, which is negative 2.67. So that gives me so that's how I got this negative 2.67. I calculated it with this formula right here. Okay, so the probability that x is greater than 60 is equal to 1 minus the probability that it is less than 60. Remember, the table gives us areas to the left. So I've got areas to the right. There's going to be some subtraction from 1 involved. Um, and the 60 goes to negative 0.267, so I take 1 and I subtract the probability of getting a z-score less than negative 2.67. So I go to my z-table, I look up, this is the positive z-value, so I have to go to negative z-values. And it was negative 2.67, so I'm going to make row that column, 0 0.0038 is the probability I'm looking for. But actually, that's this probability, so it's not quite the probability. This is the point zero zero three eight. To get this for the question mark, I need to subtract point zero zero three eight from one. And when I do that, I get point nine nine six two. So that is the probability I'm looking for. So we'll put that right in here. Point nine nine six two, and we're done. About the probability of selecting a person with an IQ between 60 and 85. Right? So notice it's one of those interior shaded regions, so there's going to be some more subtraction involved. Um, but specifically, X here, which is IQ, the shaded region is to the left of the mean, because the mean is 100. So between 60 and 85 is this area here. Both scores are below the mean, but it, you can still figure out that area. And so the idea is I want to convert these x scores, IQs, to z values. 
And again, we do that with this formula. Z equals X minus mu over sigma. And when we do that, we've done, we did the 60 up here, and we got negative 2.67. So that was already done for us. Check. Um, if x equals 85, then z is x minus mu over sigma, negative 1.00. Right, so negative 1 there. So the probability that x is between 60 and 85 is the probability, and again, it's due to the nature of the tables, it only gives us areas to the left. So I take the area to the left of the bigger problem, the bigger number, and I subtract the area to the left of the smaller number. And that'll give me this area in between. Okay. So the bigger number is 85, and the smaller number is 60. And when I convert those to z-scores, the, the, the bigger number is actually negative 1, and the smaller number is negative 2.67. So when I look up negative 1, and that is negative 1.0. So that's here, and the first one there is... Negative 1.00, so that's 0.1587. That gives me the bigger area. That gives me this area here, right, the whole way from the from the 85 to the left. And then the smaller area, I got to look up negative 2.67, which I did already, and I got this value of 0 0.0038. So I take the bigger probability, subtract the smaller one, right. I get 0.1549. So that area there is 0.1549. And that's the probability we seek. For the next case, and this is always the easiest one because we don't have to do any subtracting or manipulating, but we do have to convert our x score to a z score. So again, x equals iq, and I want the probability of randomly selecting a person with an iq less than 115. So there's the mean, 100. The 115 is to the right. So I convert that to a z-score using the formula z equals x minus mu over sigma, which is happening right there. 115 minus 100 over 15 is positive 1.00. So the probability that x is less than 115 is the same as the probability that z is less than 1.00. And so when I look up 1.00, 1 .0, 0, 0.0, 0.8413. Okay. So 0.8143 is the area of that shaded region, which is the probability we seek, 0.8143. All right, moving right along. Next page. A high school offers a special program for gifted students. In order to qualify, students must have an IQ in the top 10%. All right, what is the minimum qualifying IQ? And again, this comes from the same problem number one, where the mean IQ was 100 and the standard deviation was 15. All right, so here's our x scores. Those are the IQs. There's the mean of the x score, 100. And what we know, we don't know this value. We want to figure out what value delineates the lower 90% from the top 10%. Right there. All right. So how do we find that value? Well, the idea is we're going to look for 0 0.90 inside the z table. And that's going to give us our z-score. So we go to the table, and we're looking inside. So we want 0 0.90 inside the table. When I say inside in capital letters like that, I am talking about in here. Right. So I look for 0 0.90, and I, it should be straddled somewhere around here. They go. Here we go. We have 0.8997 and 0 0.9015. Again, 0 0.90 actually doesn't show up, so we just choose the closer of the two. Of these two, 0.8997 is the closest to 0 0.90. But that's not what we wanted. We wanted the actual z-score. So this probability 
this area corresponds to a z score that starts 1.28. Z is 1.28. We'll take that back to our worksheet here. 1.28. So what that means, so that's where this 1.28 came from. It came from looking for 0 0.90 inside the table. But now that's not an IQ, that's a Z-score. But what this says is that the IQ we seek is 1.28 standard deviations above the mean. In other words, we use this formula x equals mu plus z times sigma, which is 100 plus 1.28 standard deviations. When you put that in the calculator, you get 119.2. So the IQ we're looking for is 119.2. So that question mark right there is 119.2. And we're done. All right. And here we go to the central limit theory where we have a sample, right? If 60 people are randomly selected, what is the probability that the mean of their IQ scores is greater than 105? So again, the, the population mean is still 100. Population standard deviation is 15. But I want to find the probability that a mean, X bar, is greater than 105. Right? I'm basically saying, what is the probability that x bar is greater than 105? Right. And so this looks just like our the pages on the the problems on the previous page, except that there's this x bar here, right? And that's going to change our z score. Um, so in converting x bar to z, if x bar is 105. Here's our formula when we're using a sample. And it looks just like the formula for z from the last page, except we didn't have that square root of n before. Right? Now we have the square root of n. And we take x bar, 105, minus mu, 100, divided by the population standard deviation, divided by the square root of 60. And it might help you in your calculator to keep in mind that this is in parentheses. Otherwise, you can get um, the wrong answer. But as long as you input that correctly, you get a z-score of 2.58. So that's where that 2.58 came from. And the probability that x bar is greater than 105 is 1 minus the probability that it's less than 105 because the book, the table in the back of the book gives you these areas. But I want this area to the right. So I have to get the area to the left, subtract it from 1 to get the area to the right. So it's 1 minus the probability that z is less than 2.58. So I go back to my book, or my uh, table, 1.58, wait, 2.58. Erase some of this stuff. 2.5, right, so I'm in this row, 8 is that column. So the number I'm looking for is 0.9951. So that's the probability I seek. It's actually not the probability I seek. It's 0.9951 is the area to the left. Right? The area to the right is 1 minus that. So the probability I actually seek is 1 minus 0.9951 or 0 0.0049. So that's the area and the probability we're looking for. So the probability of getting 60 people with a mean IQ greater than 105 is pretty small. 0 0.0049. All right, so let's take a look at a normal approximation to the binomial distribution. So, assume 13% of all people are left-handed, right? And I've heard that value quoted um, anywhere from 10 to 13. And you're going to invite 100 students to an origami workshop, and you have 20 pairs of left-handed scissors in the supply closet. Use the normal approximation for the binomial distribution to determine the probability you won't have enough left-handed scissors. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is get them, so, so our graph looks like this. Here's our x, and that's actually 
the discrete variable for the number of people out of a hundred who are left-handed. And we're going to convert that to a z-score. Um, but in order to get this mean, we have to figure out, well, if the whole 13% is accurate, what's the mean? And so the mean in groups of 100 people is going to be 13. Right? So that's where that 13, mu equals n times p. The standard deviation is the square root of n times p times q. So I have a standard deviation of approximately 3.4. So you want the probability that x is greater than 20 or x is greater than or equal to 21. And those won't necessarily be the same because when we use a continuous distribution to approximate a discrete probability, um, there's some overlap there. Um, so either way actually works, right? If you have more than 20, you don't have enough. Or if you have greater than or equal to 21, you won't have enough. So this is where the approximation you know, it's an approximation. So if you use x star as 20, so if we make this a 20, then the z-score becomes x star minus mu over sigma. And you get 2.06, in which case this would be 2.06. And the probability that x is greater than 20 is going to be equal to the probability that z is greater than 2.06. So if we look up 2.06 in the table, we're at 2.0. I need to get to 6 down here. Two point, so it's 0 0.9083. All right, but the problem is the 0 0.9083 is this area. Nine, sorry, 803 is that area. So I have to subtract it to, from 1 if I want to get that area. So when I do, I get 0 0.0197. Zero one nine seven point six. Um, point zero one nine seven. Okay, that's if I that's if I calculate the probability that x is greater than twenty, which in a discrete world means twenty one or greater. But from a continuous variable, that's not necessarily the case. So, so a point zero one nine seven is a perfectly acceptable answer. But suppose you said, all right, I want to find the probability that x is greater than or equal to 21, because that would also mean you don't have enough scissors, right? Because you only have 20 pair. So in that case, this x star is going to be 21. Your z score is going to be slightly different because I have 21 instead of 20. 2.35. And so this is 2.35. And when you look up 2.35 in the z table, you get 0 0.9906 is the area to the left. And so the area to the right is 1 minus that, 0 0.0094. 0 0.0094. 0 0 right. So that's another answer that's also an acceptable approximation. So it has pretty accuracy of this particular book. Um, other books would say what you should do is find the probability that z or that x is greater than 20.5. So you sort of split the difference there. That's a perfectly good thing to do, um, but I didn't do that here. If you actually have software that can do the binomial distribution for large n, um, which I'm assuming we're just going with tables, so you don't have that. But if you do, in any software that has statistical um, functions or decent graphing calculators, you can do this. You can find the probability that x is greater than or equal to 21 in n trials, where the probability of a single success is 0.13. You get 0 0.0171. So notice it's actually in between my two estimates. So it's pretty good. I mean, so the the normal approximation did a pretty good job of narrowing in on the actual probability. This is this, by the way, is actually the exact answer. All right. Okay. So I believe that wraps up the worksheet, which wraps up chapter six altogether. And um, if you're still with me, I guess you can check back in at chapter seven. Have a good day. Bye.